All right, welcome councillors, please stand. Uh, Almighty God, we the representatives of the citizens of the city of Brisbane are assembled to strive and care for the welfare of our city and all its people. Lord, we ask that you guide us in the decisions we make today. Amen. We acknowledge the traditional custodians of the land on which we meet and pay our respect to elders past and present. Please be seated. I declare the meeting open and remind all councillors of your obligation to declare material, personal and conflicts of interest where relevant and the requirement of such to remove yourself for the meeting for debate and voting where applicable. Councillors, are there any apologies? I see no apologies. Lord Mayor. Where am I? Lord Mayor, would you... Uh, Thank welcome. you, uh, Mr Chair. Uh, before proceeding uh, with my budget presentation, I would like to point out that a copy of uh, each budget document for the 2020-2021 financial year has been uploaded to ASDEC Docs uh, and hard copies will also be delivered to each councillor. Not yet. <clears throat> Mr Chair, uh, in the lead up to the recent council election, our clear message to the people of Brisbane was that experience matters. We offered them a choice of stable and sensible financial management. We promised that we would steer the city through the economic crisis that the coronavirus has visited upon us. We told them that we would continue our solid and proven record of responsible financial management. We told them we would keep rates low. We said we would continue to invest in the important facilities and services that make Brisbane a great place to live today. Our parks and libraries, our buses, ferries and city cats, our community groups and festivals, and well-maintained roads and footpaths. We said we would invest in those things that will make the Brisbane of tomorrow even better than the Brisbane of today. New green bridges, the Victoria Park vision, and of course, the turn up and go Brisbane Metro which will revolutionise public transport in our city. We told them we wouldn't shy away from the tough calls needed to manage Australia's largest council. As you know, Mr Chair, the people of Brisbane put their faith in us and accepted the promises that we made to them. They agreed with us that experience matters. And today, my team and I are delivering on those promises. The budget I am presenting today is framed in one of the most challenging economic environment and conditions in a generation. And yet despite those challenges, this budget will help lay the foundations of our economic recovery and ensure that Brisbane is positioned to thrive as the world moves forward into the recovery phase. This is a budget that builds to help Brisbane rebuild this is a budget that builds roads, bridges, bikeways, footpaths and playgrounds. This is a budget that builds better public transport with the turn up and go metro and locally constructed double decker city cats. This budget will also help to build homes. It will help build new, greener homes. And more importantly, this budget will help to build employment, will help to build jobs. We will support households who are doing it tough. We will support local clubs and sporting groups, and we will back our hardworking business owners. At a time when the people of Brisbane are ready to step out from the shadow of coronavirus and begin the recovery work, they can be certain that their administration is backing them with a budget that delivers targeted support to those who need it most. And we will do that while continuing the LNP's track record of delivering budget surpluses. Despite the obvious economic and financial challenges, the budget I am presenting today is a surplus budget. And we don't strive to deliver surplus budgets simply for the sake of having a surplus. Like any small business budget or any household budget, responsible budgeting today means you can do more tomorrow. It means you can grow your business or invest in improving your family home. 
At the city level, the same principle applies. Responsible budgeting now means we can build a better Brisbane tomorrow. It means we can invest more, build more, and deliver more for our community. This year, we're investing the dividends of responsible financial management into helping the people and businesses of Brisbane get back on their feet, just as we promised we would. This budget demonstrates that experience matters more than ever. Mr Chair, right across our city, we know people are doing it tough right now. We know there are thousands of households struggling with unemployment or declining revenue from a family business. And we know that the recovery from this struggle won't be immediate. So today, today, I announced that my administration will freeze rates for the remainder of 2020. Historically, rates have increased from the 1st of July each year. However, this year, all rate payers will have six months relief. This, Mr Chair, is the first rates freeze implemented in Brisbane in 35 years. Not this rate freeze will apply to both residential and business rates. When rates are adjusted in 2021, they will rise by the standard figure of recent years, 2.5%. But averaged across the 12 months of the budget, this will equate to a 1.25% rate increase. We'll also offer targeted relief to households experiencing financial hardship, including a one-off $250 rates rebate for job seeker recipients. We will continue to support pensioners by providing a rebate of up to 40% on their rates bills and free off-peak travel for seniors on buses, city cats and ferries. I'm also pleased to announce that we're able to retain our popular 50% rates reduction for first homeowners. Over and above the existing 50% rebate, first home buyers who purchase a newly built home to live in will not pay any general rates at all for the first 12 months, 100% discount on general rates. This initiative is aimed at supporting not only the first home buyers themselves, but also the thousands of builders and tradies that rely on construction activity in the household uh, housing sector. But we know it's just not residents and businesses doing it tough. Our community groups have had their opportunities to raise revenue slashed with the COVID restrictions. We took early action to help these organisations by ensuring that fees and other council charges were waived. We then announced we would help struggling sports clubs by providing a one-off $5,000 grant so that they could water their fields ahead of reopening. We have urged the state government to reduce the state bulk water charge, which is the single biggest cost on clubs' water bills, but unfortunately they have not yet listened to that call. But we will continue to make it. In the meantime, uh, we will be providing $3 million in direct financial assistance for community groups on council land to help them rebuild after this pandemic. This will not only help clubs pay for bills that are piled up during their forced closure, it will also support leaseholders who have been unable to do maintenance works on their building due to lack of revenue. Mr Chair, when we were at the height of the coronavirus pandemic in April this year, we recognised that the economic damage our residents would suffer was going to be deep and for some potentially long term, with many jobs lost and a great number of our small businesses shut. Some will never reopen. For these reasons, we, need, we knew we needed to use the resources of council to mitigate where possible the negative impacts and consequences to our economy. To meet this challenge, I established an economic recovery task force chaired by our finance chair, Councillor Adam Allen, to identify, develop and oversee specific economic recovery initiatives. This task force was given a wide brief and a broad scope across council to maximise economic recovery in Brisbane for the people most affected. We have approached the Economic Recovery Task Force with four key themes. First, supporting local business to recover. Secondly, uh, rebooting the economy where activity have effectively stopped. Identifying future growth opportunities in a post-coronavirus world and identifying and incentivizing the development of new markets and business opportunities. One of the first initiatives of the Economic Recovery Task Force 
is the retasking of Brisbane marketing, which from today will become the Brisbane Economic Development Agency. The agency will shift its focus to rolling out the initiatives of the Economic Recovery Task Force and exploring other opportunities to boost economic activity across the city. Other initiatives to flow from the task force include streamlining council processes, as well as cutting fees and charges that unnecessarily impede business activity, making specific and targeted grants available for not-for-profits, and establishing a Brisbane business hub at the capital, offering business mentoring and professional business advice, and extending our buy local campaign with a focus on expanding business activity in suburban precincts. Mr. Chair, this administration will help rebuild Brisbane's economy and create more local jobs by increasing the number of council contracts going to local business through our local buy procurement policy. We recently cut the payment terms from council to small business suppliers to seven days. And today I can announce that this will become a permanent initiative. We'll also continue to waive a range of charges, rents and permit fees, including footpath dining, uh, food business permits, and a whole range of other uh, fees and charges until the end of December 2020. This will provide millions of dollars in relief for local businesses at a time when they need it the most. We will also provide more direct support to local businesses in the suburbs through our team of business liaison officers, a 24-7 business hotline, and online support through our dedicated business in Brisbane engagement activities. We're going to breathe life into our neighbourhoods with 9.2 million to revitalise suburban precincts and a $7 million fund to bring forward park and footpath projects in every single Brisbane ward. We will freeze car parking fees, both for on-street parking and in council-owned parking lots in the CBD. And because our budget was strong, we were able to switch off street parking metres throughout the height of the coronavirus, reduce the daily rate in Council's Wickham Terrace and King George Square car parks, and also suspend parking enforcement measures. We did this to make life easier for those who still needed to drive each day for essential work. These measures came at a cost of almost $15 million to the budget, but this was all about the people of Brisbane supporting each other through tough times. What we learned as business picked up and retail stores reopened was that many small business owners relied on the turnover generated by parking meters to encourage more customers to drop into suburban trading areas. So by having our parking meters fully operational again, combined with freezing the charges until 2021, we will support retailers by maximizing visitor numbers to our local shopping precincts. We know that the housing industry is a major employer across our suburbs. And according to the Housing Industry Association, new home starts across Australia could fall by up to 40% in the coming financial year, which puts at risk up to 50% of those employed in the industry. In addition to our 100% rates rebate for first home buyers purchasing a new home, we will further support the home building industry by providing a 50% rebate on infrastructure charges for the greenest and most energy efficient buildings. This will be an incentive to those who are currently in the planning process or who may already have an approval to make a commitment to getting on with the work and creating jobs in our city. By incentivising the construction of high quality and environmentally sustainable homes, We'll also be making further steps towards our future blueprint goal of promoting best practice design in Brisbane. This is a continuation of this administration's successful use of targeted incentives to stimulate and encourage construction activity in specific sectors of the industry. We have used this measure previously to prompt a major increase in hotel accommodation and again to support the residential aged care sector. Now, as well as boosting employment by fast-tracking shovel-ready building projects, we'll also be driving gains in energy efficiency, water use and livability in the city's building stock. This is an administration that cares about Brisbane businesses because we know that is where the jobs are created and that is where the green shoots of economic recovery will be found. 
This budget, Mr Chair, provides $72.6 million over four years to deliver new parks and sports fields in various parts of the city, including Runcorn, Nudgee and Heathwood. Yeah, yeah. There's, a, there's a further $55.9 million over this term for developing new suburban parks, $12.9 million for upgrading neighbourhood parks and almost $130 million for delivering iconic parks for Brisbane. This year's budget will start delivering our many park commitments to the people of Brisbane, including Bradbury Park on the border of Kedron and Chermside, Grinstead Park in Alderley, and the Murray Recreation Reserve. We're providing 8.8 .8 million over the next four years to support our Greener Suburbs program, which will see major landscaping and tree planting activities carried out across the city. We'll complete the work we started last year in Paddington and start work in Manly West and River Hills, both suburbs where we want to increase the shade cover and improve the amenity for residents. This record investment in green space and parks is supported by our Green Future Fund, which I established last year and which is financed by the returns of the City of Brisbane Investment Corporation. The positive impact of this funding will continue this year with an expected dividend of $15 million being invested into our city's parks and green spaces. Our Victoria Park vision continues to gain momentum. In the coming financial year, we will invest $3.3 million to finalise the design and plan construction following enthusiastic community support in the consultation phase. Brisbane residents have embraced the opportunity to put forward their ideas for our biggest new park in half a century. They want their space to become a place for nature retreat, for adventure, discovery, and for reconnection. They've asked for native bushland areas, waterholes, walking tracks, bikeways, treetop walks, along with dozens of other ideas. And I can announce today that over the next four years, we'll invest 83 million in bringing those ideas to life with the transformation to commence next year in 2021-2022. We're also embarking on a new project to prepare the Sherwood Arboretum for its 100 year anniversary. We will undertake a targeted program of investment in this amazing and unique green asset to ensure it's ready to shine in 2025. Turning now, Mr. Chair, to our very successful- Graceful's 100 this year. Program. No, no interjections. In the last term of council, we honoured our commitment to purchase more than 750 hectares of at-risk bushland. And in fact, we exceeded that target. We fast-tracked 10 years worth of bushland purchases into just four years. And that land is now locked away forever for future generations. While we will continue acquisitions for the people of Brisbane, our focus in the coming term will be on maintaining and rehabilitating the bushland that is now in council's reserve. We will conduct fire risk reduction, habitat restoration, and invest $3.5 million in the coming year in our Wipeout Weeds program. Yeah. We'll also be working to make sure bushland reserves are more accessible so that residents and visitors can enjoy nature in our great city. Mr Chair, expanding and improving our city's transport and road network remains one of this administration's highest priorities. This budget gears up to kick off a $500 million investment in partnership with the federal government for coordinated action to deliver increased capacity and improve safety on suburban roads through the Better Roads for Brisbane program. Council's commitment to our smoother suburban streets road resurfacing program continues in this budget with $360 million allocated over the next four years. Our commitment to help the state government eliminate open level crossings remains on the table and we continue to urge the state government to do its part to deal with the congestion caused by its rail network. New initiatives we announced during the election are also funded in this year's budget. We'll be investing in improved safety for seniors around high pedestrian activity areas such as hospitals as well as investing in footpath improvements in and around areas with high concentration of senior residents. We will spend 107 million over the next four years on footpath reconstruction, ensuring that damage caused by tree roots and land movement is repaired efficiently and that our footpaths are safe for pedestrians. 
We'll also commence our delivery of the $2.9 million SAMS for Schools project, which aims to bring our successful speed awareness monitors to schools which have ongoing issues with speed. It builds on our commitment to work with school communities to ensure that schools are safe environments so that children feel safe walking and riding to school. This new project is in addition to 6.4 million allocated to creating safer paths to schools. We'll spend 58 million in the next two years on major cycleway projects, including completing the Indrapilly Riverwalk. This is in addition to our green bridges, which will help transform the way residents move and to help reduce traffic congestion. While we deliver these major projects, we're also progressing our range of commitments we made for new shared paths in our suburbs. Our active transport infrastructure fund has 29 million allocated in this term to construct a variety of smaller scale suburban projects. We will also invest $16.6 million over four years in making the Brisbane CBD more pedestrian and cyclist friendly as major developments in the CBD come online. With Brisbane Metro, Queens Wharf, Cross River Rail, and our Kangaroo Point to the City Green Bridge, this investment will bring some of the ideas in our City Centre Master Plan and Adelaide Street Vision to life. I'm also pleased to confirm today that we will work with the Queensland Government to roll out pop-up bike lanes in the CBD as soon as possible. Mr Chair, on my first day as Lord Mayor, I announced my administration's plan for five new green bridges to make our river city more connected and easier for people to get around. With a commitment of 550 million towards these bridges, we'll be making the largest investment in active travel infrastructure in the city's history. We said those bridges would be a major 10 year project for the city, part of making the Brisbane of tomorrow better than the Brisbane of today. Ahead of the election in March, I committed to fully funding, if necessary, two of those bridges at Kangaroo Point and Breakfast Creek, rather than waiting for the state and federal budgets to be handed down. And today, my team delivers on that commitment with 23.2 million over the next 12 months to ramp up work on these first two bridges and more than $300 million over four years. Of course, we will continue to advocate strongly for funding from other levels of government. Before the election, Mr Chair, we also committed to listening to the people of Brisbane on how they would like to see those five bridges rolled out. And we have done that. We have held extensive community consultation on all five locations, and it's pleasing to see overwhelming support for four of our proposed locations. However, Mr Chair, the people of the centenary suburbs and Bell Bowery have spoken, and they've made it clear that they don't support the proposal for a green bridge to connect their two suburbs. So today, I confirm we have listened to the people in those suburbs, and we will look for other locations for our fifth green bridge. Mr Chair, as you would have seen in the media in recent days, the Turn Up and Go Brisbane Metro is moving ahead at full pace. Just like Brisbane itself, Metro keeps getting better. During construction, it will create 2,600 jobs and a myriad of local supplier opportunities. Since the last budget, Mr Chair, we've announced that the people of Brisbane will get home quicker on world-leading electric vehicles instead of the diesel-powered vehicles that were originally envisaged. This will require rapid charging infrastructure throughout the metro system, as well as overnight charging at the metro depot. Early works at the depot are already underway and council has moved to secure additional vacant land next door to the original depot site. While this will add to the upfront investment, it will future-proof the metro depot against residential encroachment. And it also gives us the capacity to increase the stabling and maintenance facilities in the future as Metro has expanded beyond its original footprint. This is a wise investment today that will save ratepayers many millions of dollars tomorrow. Our preferred tenderers for the construction partnership have also been named, and we're moving ahead with the final design for the project. This now includes a board tunnel under Adelaide Street instead of the cut and cover design originally proposed to connect Victoria Bridge with the King George Square station. 
Understandably, these variations represent significant changes in the scope of the Metro project. And as a result, the budget has been updated to reflect these improvements. Mr Chair, Brisbane Metro is the most significant public transport project being undertaken in Brisbane right now, and in fact, for many generations. By investing in Metro, we are responding to the commuters who are eager for more convenient and greener transport options. We're responding to the ever-increasing demands on our road network and beginning a project that will evolve and grow, serving our city for many decades to come. This, Mr Chair, is the essence of what good local government is about. I am so proud to be part of a team that had the foresight and the vision to conceive the Brisbane Metro project and has the experience to deliver it, Mr Chair. Across the other areas of our public transport network, we continue to invest in our next generation city cats. The first double deck city cat has been embraced by the people of Brisbane, and I'm pleased that over the next four years, we will invest 37.1 million to build seven more, right here in Brisbane, supporting local jobs and delivering a modern public transport network for the future. We're also investing 14.6 million to deliver new and upgraded ferry terminals including the Howard Smith Wharves Ferry Terminal and providing greater access to the waterfront dining and entertainment precincts. We'll also continue our investment in our world-class bus network with funding to purchase 60 rigid equivalent air conditioned and accessible buses to maintain Brisbane's status of having one of the youngest and most modern bus fleets in the entire country. We'll also purchase four fully electric buses, increasing the number announced last year as part of our on-road electric bus trial. This will help to guide the procurement of our bus fleet in the future, and we look forward to the results of the trial as we continue our commitment to a modern public transport fleet for Brisbane commuters. As well as free off-peak travel for seniors, Council will continue to fund the Blue City Glider in partnership with the State Government and majority fund the Maroon City Glider. Brisbane ratepayers will contribute more than 94 million in the coming year to support bus services across the city as part of our $144.8 million subsidy of public transport. Mr Chair, Brisbane is regarded as a leader in waste management and resource recovery. More than 130,000 individual waste collection services occur each day while residents and businesses also deliver additional material to our resource recovery centres. Importantly, our efforts to work with the community and promote waste reduction are working. Over the last 10 years, there's been a 40% decrease in the amount of recyclables being placed in the general waste stream. More than 105,000 households now use a green top bin which has led to a 30% reduction in the amount of green waste going into red top bins. For the next two years, we will pause Council's curbside collection program, saving around $13 million. We are budgeted to resume uh, this service in 2022. This Hi. saving has been reallocated to help fund more than 15 million in economic recovery initiatives, including the 7 million boost for suburban park and footpath projects which will equally benefit every ward. In line with my team's commitment before the election, in the coming year, we will offer a larger yellow top recycling bin and continue to provide a green top bin at no upfront cost. We'll also provide a rebate on the cost of compost bins or worm farms to help reduce the amount of organic waste going into landfill. And also, as I announced before the election, for the very first time, we will make Council's popular tip vouchers available to all residents, not just homeowners. This will include everyone, including renters, to access our resource recovery centres at no charge. Mm -hmm. Mr Chair, the delivery of this budget would not have been possible without, without the assistance of many people. I want to personally thank all of my LMP team members for their ongoing commitment to working together to build a better Brisbane. I thank the Deputy Mayor, Councillor Krista Adams, and Finance Chair, Councillor Adam Allen, for their assistance in formulating this budget. I want to also thank and acknowledge the support provided by the Chief Executive Officer, Colin Jensen, Divisional Manager, Bill Lyon, 
Chief Financial Officer, Paul Oberly, to Mark Russell, Tanya Nish and Catherine Swift and the entire budget team, a big thank you. To all of our council staff, I offer my thanks for your hard work and dedication to building a better Brisbane. When the initial work on this budget began before Christmas last year, I don't think any of us could have foreseen the challenges we would confront as a city. We would never have imagined having to turn off parking meters or waive fees for thousands of businesses. We could not have pre predicted the need to freeze rates and charges throughout 2020 and offer a $250 rebate to households doing it tough. But what we could predict and what is an ever-present reality in framing a budget such as this is that economic factors are always unpredictable. The LNP's experience over 17 budgets now has included the GFC, the 2011 floods, uh, many destructive storms, and, and now he, this COVID-related... I can't get it right. No injections, please. Lord Mayor. And that experience tells us that while external factors can have an enormous impact on the budget, they can be overcome with sensible and solid financial management. It's always been a critical part of our record in the past, and it will always be our approach into the future. When we asked the people of Brisbane for their trust on March 28, we told them that we would steer the city through the challenging times ahead. And we will continue to deliver on that promise. We told voters we would continue to keep the budget in surplus. And today, against the odds, we deliver on that promise. And most of all, we pledge to continue building a better Brisbane for tomorrow. This budget delivers on that commitment. Mr Chair, experience really does matter. This budget shows why I commend it to the Chamber. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Lord Mayor, can I ask for a resolution that the uh, meeting be adjourned till Friday morning, please? Thank you, Mr Chair. Uh, Mr Chair, I now move that this meeting of Council be adjourned until 9am on Friday, the 19th of June, 2020. Seconded. It's been moved by the Lord Mayor, seconded by the Deputy Mayor, that this meeting of Council be adjourned until 9am on Friday, the 19th of June, 2020. All those in favour say aye and raise your hands. Aye. Aye. Thank you. Please lower your hands. All those against, please say no and raise your hands. No. The ayes have it. Thank you. We'll see you all on Friday. The meeting is adjourned. Hopeless. 30 minutes.